us. It's you. What are the odds? <laughs> so now we notice. All right. hmm. Well, as all right as any of us. A makeshift Harper's fire might not be where I hope to set up shop. But maybe I've got something you can use anyway. And if you find any interesting materials in need of working, I'm happy to help. I hesitated to mention this back in the Druid's Grove, for obvious reasons. But no one has earned my trust, if not you. When Elturel was dragged into Avernus, I was drafted into a devil's smithy. It should have been awful. But infernal metal is like a wild horse. Powerful, exuberant. It'll kill you if you lack technique. Damn. I can sense some. Smell it almost. Somewhere in the area. Underground, maybe. Out there in the shadows. If you find it, bring it to me. I'll make something incredible. Using something that's already fabricated is tough. Oh. Can try. How many do you have? I didn't keep the other one because I didn't mm. think it was... I thought I sniffed American scent somewhere. These must have been a pain to get a hold of. American masks are brittle, so what I make won't last as long as my usual pieces. I think I sold the other one. Because I didn't, I didn't think it was helpful or worth anything. But it was called Devil Foil. There. Be careful who sees you using that. You might draw the wrong sort of eyes. Ooh. And Spells and in like it. certain abilities. That's really hey, annoying. Basically, as long as he doesn't get a natural one, we should be fine. <laughs> Sometimes it's really important to explore, you know? A mean lock. Um. <laughs> oh, they're like weird little crab things. Oh. A temple to saloon. <laughs> Sir, you can calm down. <laughs> Why are you still moaning, sir? You should be fine. Sir, turning them away from our our cause. <laughs> sir, Asterian, you'll have to carry that. S stop it. Apexes, go on. Shit. Leaning in. Go on, drink. Make it drink. Be drunk. No. You and I both. I don't know that it matters that I'm using inspiration. Yeah. <clears throat> it's okay. We're not intending to actually make it past this.
disgusting. <laughs> Why'd you have to die? Damn, it's good to be alive. Um, Marching. Take care! I'm fading fast. I must heal. <sighs> I don't know if they trust all the wine on him, but... A wyvern stinger. Ooh. <laughs> Never wanted the easy path. <sighs> well... Something good here, I hope. <laughs> it seems like he imbued... His drink with um, the shadow root, whatever. The shadow root sacks. Because <laughs> it glowed with that same um, color. So I'd assume. And based on the signs and books around here, uh, seems like it's mostly evil patrons that they had. Madeline's ledger. The words for the attention of Dark Justicier Nata Natasha are written across the top of every page. This is an excerpt from the last page. Morning, day 15. Seisman Noak said Catherick wouldn't hold on to Moonrise Towers for long at this rate. Evening, day 18. Imani. Atak Atakni claimed it was unfair that the Thorns had the cushiest jobs. Night, day 22. Mark Jacobs, Benjamin Black Blanchett made jokes about the Thorns, especially Lord Catherick, said he was a m misery guts, a weeping nutsack, <laughs> and discussed how exactly how his wife would have liked it. I know that what Mark and Ben said was just plain awful, Lady Natasha, but they're some of my best friends, and I've never heard such talk out of them. They were upset over their wages being cut and were the drunkest I'd ever seen by midnight. I know it looks bad, but hand over heart, you, you've you never met two gents more devoted to Our Lady, I swear it. A different, more elegant script appears beneath it. Our Lady of Loss would be proud of you, Madeline. Do not worry about Mark and Benjamin. Myself and your two gents are simply going to have a little chat. I promise. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well. <clears throat> Metal door. Careful. Oh boy, Asterian. How oh, for a skeleton king. Actually, I might have the key on me. I really didn't need to be unlocking shit, but that's okay. I just like showing off, you know? Let's move. What path lies before me? Hopefully not more enemies. <laughs> Don't waste a step. Purple worm gullet. Oh, don't tell me there's purple worms around here. Research notes. They describe a powerful venom extracted from a rare purple worm. Distiller Thizable Thorn sought to create a fatal poison using the worm's gullet. He procured several parts of a worm gullet, but rinsed one in error. The poison he brewed was noxious, but not fatal. Visible devoted months to formulating a deadly poison with the remaining ingredients, without success. After exhaustive experimentation, he was able to make a near-deadly extract from the glands. But to complete his poison, Visible required one last ingredient, the petals of a corpse rose. The book's index reveals corpse roses may grow near tombs. 
mausoleums and particularly redolent cadavers. Thisabald enlisted a courier from Baldur's Gate to obtain corpse rose petals and other ingredients and deliver them to a covert location. Mm. Unfortunately, a deep purple stain darkens the final page, obscuring the parcel's destination. Oh boy. <laughs> Your mind separates the black from the blue, revealing the stash's location. You mark your map as a reminder. With the corpse rose petals the package contains, you might create Isabel's purple worm poison. Ooh, exciting. Ugh. Belly glummer. I'm definitely keeping that on my person. I'm assuming the man just went crazy, but you know. One day I'll catch a break. Hello, my dear. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> trying to grab this. The waning moon's deliveries are recorded here in a careful hand. The rear pages, however, are devoted to the distiller's personal reflections. Ten Tarshak. Father Catherick, Catherick's reach begins to extend beyond Wraithwind's borders. The Thorms are but collectors, collectors of coin, glory, blood, and more yet. I, however, collected that which holds the most value, information. The mason caught my eye. Straight are his steps, and faithful are his words. For as long as drink does not touch his tongue, two drops of blackfire whiskey, and he sings his heart's true song, true tune. He calls father a tyrant, a coward, a traitor. He beseeches the moon maiden to shine upon him once more. Dangerous words. I have told father he will surely silence the mason and make him an example. Meanwhile, the mason draws his heresy. It is all I can do not to mock him to his very face. Six flame rule. My own methods used against me. The ale she fed me was poisoned, and by my own hand. My truth serum was all too effective. I professed the lot, the poison drinks, Malice's treatments, the interrogations, all of it. She means to reveal our schemes to the Baldur's Gate authorities. Unless, of course, I grace her palm with more gold than Garingoth could muster. Father would have my head if he knew, or worse yet, donate me to Malice. <laughs> Such is my good fortune that I possess all manner of barrels. She should make a perfect fit. 23 Elliant. The Harpers came too close. Too close. They poisoned Father Catherick himself. Yet he professes no ill effects. Malice insists it's a fluke. <coughs> Doctor, he may be, but he is no less a fool for it. Father has achieved that of which I can only dream, immortality. I have long suspected I can guess Father's purpose, but I cannot fathom the means. Yikes. Oh boy. I bet it's got a trap on it, based on that reaction. What now? Let's crack it open. Hmm. Interesting. Who would that be useful for? Well, you are drunk, you have advantage on attack rolls. Maybe give that to Carlac. Hmm. 
Would you like to know something interesting? If you mix suspension of venomous fang with vitriol of Lulth's candle, any vitriol will do, out comes a poison, drip, drip, drip. When in doubt with alchemy, when in need of ecstasy, when my throat clicks with scream, drip, drip, drip is what I dream. It did not work, the platinum scale plan did not work, and I hurt so badly. Okay. Still breathing, despite everything. Shouldn't mind my step. Anything back here? Something over there. Tongue of Madness. Ooh. what else he has in here, if anything. Okay. Open up. Oh, there's some more gullets. Where is he finding purple worm? Ugh. Ugh, I know that means that there's purple worms around here somewhere. I'm not excited about oh, it. Delicious. <laughs> Easy. Jesus, a 27. Icarus gloves. Icarus corrosion when the wearer deals ac acid damage. They also inflict nox noxious fumes upon the target. I think that's more useful than his current gloves. Is good. Can't slow we'll down. probably take a long rest here because we're pretty beat up, and no I think Shadowheart is out of all of her. Yeah, all of her spell slots. Okay. Can't give up now. Glad to have an ally. You know, I feel a connection between us. Like we're 
Two souls walking the same path. Every step we walk trails blood. Killing is an instinct for us. I respect you for that. I would keep the murders in our own camp to a minimum. But otherwise, we're very much on the same page. <laughs> I just worry that we're not considering all our options when it comes to our uninvited guests. How many people are infected with them, do you think? Hundreds? Thousands? That is and a great not question. Just goblin trash. Yeah. There are powerful people in the worm's thrall. Whoever's waiting for us at Moonrise Towers controls it all. Supposedly. But if we can take that control from them, imagine the power we wield. Isn't it? Imagine the entire cult under our thumb. I'm just saying, there's an opportunity before us. If we can control the tadpoles, we can keep ourselves safe. And enjoy a little world domination on the side. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can't tell me that doesn't sound fun. Okay. Okay. I knew I was right about you. It's so good to find a kindred spirit. Of course, this all assumes we live long enough to find this uh, moonrise. But I'm feeling optimistic. Same. It's simple. Just find a vampire that will drink your blood and turn you into a vampire spawn. They're obedient puppet. In theory, the next step is to drink their blood. Once you've done that, you're free. And a true vampire. <laughs> yes and no. The problem is, once you're a vampire spawn, they completely control you. They have to allow you to bite them. And why would they do that? Vampires are power-hungry creatures. They won't lose a servant to create a competitor. Trust me, it doesn't happen. Well, it must have happened at some point, because there are vampires. Breathe deep and move. I wonder if she has anything to say. You know, I've been catching myself smiling more lately. I think that's your fault. <laughs> Very serious of you. But go ahead. Well, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't been dwelling on becoming a Dark Justice here. Perhaps seeing the power of Shah unleashed on that land is keeping the thought in my mind. But don't worry. I still have plenty of room for you in both mind and heart. Difficult to say. A fellow servant of the Night Singer would surely be an ally to me under most circumstances. But something doesn't add up. I'll need to see where his allegiances truly lie. I don't know, I'm so confused, because, like, I feel like more should have happened with Shadowheart recently, but just nothing's been happening thoughts. with her, so... I don't know. The year, ten air. The place, sleepy little town called Baldur's Gate. Our hero, Karlak, a knock kneed delinquent from the outer city, with everything to give and nothing to lose. I was a kid looking for a way to fill my days and make some cash when I fell into the wrong crowd. 
worked for a guy I respected. A lot. Turns out the feeling wasn't mutual. Through the jigs and the reels, he made a deal with Zariel behind my back. You know Zariel, right? Archdevil of Avernus. She put this thing in my chest and set me to work. Well, to war. I learned quick how to stay alive. And the engine served me when it came to killing devils. Ten years of that. The stories I could tell. Guy named Gortash. Politician. Inventor. One of these wheeler dealer types who seems to have a finger in every pie. I guess I was naive to think everything he got up to was above board. What did I know? I saw a job, a good job, with people I liked, doing work I was good at. Sometimes I'm jealous of that girl. Oh, to feel so invincible again. I mean... <clears throat> we were both part of Zariel's inner circle. Her by choice, me by force. In the grand scheme of things, I'm inconsequential to Zariel. Sure, I've got the engine, but I wasn't even her strongest fighter. But she favored me like a child favors a captive pet. Mizora envied the attention, I suppose. I'm sure when Zariel gave her the order to hunt me down, Mizora was delighted. I don't know. You'd think she'd have more important things to do. Devils and their pride. No kidding. The fighting, the chaos, the betrayal. It had the makings of a good stage show, but I did not want to be one of the players. Mm -hmm. Well met. Well, why do you never have anything to say? <laughs> I don't think I can say anything more to Arabella, because I already told her that her parents were dead. And she did not appreciate me telling her that. Thoughts are back on the twisted Skeletas and his honeyed words of violence. You called for me, master? I don't need to. <laughs> they are all the same. There is but one thing on your mind, and it won't go away until your thirsty urge is sated. I come here, for I wish to bring you another powerful tithe. But I cannot grant you this prize quite yet. You must do something Divinely unspeakable first. <gasps> you will receive a royal prize for killing this pretty girl. Oh. Isabel, the cleric with the sweetest face of the moon. She is too precious to live. Uh. Why? The greatest crime of them all. <laughs> Nothing at all. Oh, Master. Consider the tiny mishap with the bard you had the last time we met. Hmm? Your unconscious clever mind hungers for extreme violence. Who knows who you might kill next if you do not satisfy your urge. Be true to yourself, master. <laughs> okay. Great. Great. So... Uh, because I'm worried that if I don't, 
I might kill... Oh... Uh, okay. Okay. Um... Uh, I really don't know... What I should be doing. Okay. Well, maybe there's something else despicable I can do instead of killing her. What's something despicable? <laughs> um. We're close. I can feel it. The absolute. Its power is strong here. Okay. Wonder if the gods are watching me. Hmm. What's that? Why can we not walk? That's a friendly looking shadow. Nothing. I don't know. I mean, I'm slowly killing off the thorns, right? You know? Oh 
coin curse. Oh no, coin. They are cursed, okay. She doesn't have any resistances. Maybe that's another armor that I could have made, is out of cursed coins. Coin helmet, coin curious. <coughs> hmm. It's almost as if she's made out of coins. She can't see us. How many hit points she got? Six hundred and six. Oh boy. Stuck safe door. Gold. Well, hello. It was all me. How how is she out of combat somehow? I can just walk away from it. On the move. Not excited to see. They can run pretty far though. I'm surprised I can't fly. <laughs> Accursed coins. Necrotic resistance, psychic resistance, poison resistance. Okay. Good to know. here. What? Hello. It's supposed to be my character's turn. You, you jumping? Oh, there we go. I 
guess they all get to have their turn before me for some reason. You... Okay. You climb up to jump down. You know... Y'all are very strange. She does not, though. Jesus. Okay. Those fuckers are, um, a lot. A lot. Um. Well, um... <laughs> She's undead? <sighs> Interesting. But she's not immune to necrotic. See, th this is- this is just why I'm just so... <sighs> curious. So curious. Um. Okay. Why did a level 1 heal and a level 3 heal heal only 3 points difference? You know? I wanna know. Now sh her like full amount of health is 406. I don't know if I got her to 200 under her initial amount. 
Maybe I did. I mean, at least if she heals, she can't heal up to the full 606. <laughs> but... <clears throat> Being very rude. Poor little mans. At least she doesn't deal a lot of damage, it's mostly her little friends. Um good you do have a healing potion. Um to shoot her. <laughs> that makes no sense. <clears throat> oh! Okay, those are taking her down by a lot. Yeah. We should just work on killing off the little guys then. Yes. She's not that important. There's just coins on the floor. There's just coins everywhere. I didn't even realize before. Nice. Wait, I don't want to hit them though. Um. something. There you go. <coughs> Man. Being very rude. Now that I know, though, if I redo this fight, this should be a lot easier. <laughs> this 
send this to a Starian. There's blood in here. I don't have any healing potions, do you? You do have. She only has six hit points? Oh man. I know, Asterion. I'm not gonna let it happen. Don't worry about it. Okay. Come on, man. You gotta at least hit her. Your heart beating. Oh boy. Um <clears throat> can we twist of fortune. When you roll a 
two or less with this weapon's damage die, re-roll it and take the new result. I think that's gonna be her new weapon, honestly. Um... An unsigned writ suggests that a counterfeit in progress. Whoever made it was planning to trade illegally within the toll house. Interesting. Um, I don't know if anyone has a, a scrolly. What a charmer! Watch your back. He does. Uh. Thank you. Please revive me. Take you. <coughs> I need healing. Oh, nice little nap. I do have the revivify spell, to be fair. But I'd prefer to just use a scroll over a spell me? slot. Yeah, it doesn't seem like if you kill her, there's a way to get oh it off way. of her, unfortunately. Which is too bad, but... <clears throat> Maybe it's honestly not worth it then. Here we go. Happening. Come on. Thank you. I really don't like wasting a potion over that, but. For one gold. A single gold. Wow. On the wall hangs a seaside landscape which often catches my eye during the course of my work-a-day life. I'm surprised Garengoth chose such a decoration for her toll house. I've never known her as an appreciator of nature, beauty, art, not but the cold clink of gold. One day, when my days are repaid, I'll travel to the coast, breathe in two deep dra drafts of air, and forget Wraithwind forever. Damn. I'm so sorry, man. Seems like you did not make it. Hmm. What's that? Okay, let's be careful. Asterian. A stuffed ogre head. Ew. <laughs> Why is it resistant to damage? Iron Vine Shield. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> Every entry is made with precise strokes and each page stamped with a wax seal bearing the letters GT. <laughs> As the pages progress, the number of recorded traders and the collected toll dramatically dwindles. Mm. Ah! 
<laughs> you know, worth it. I'm assuming she became overcome by uh, the inability to collect more coin because they were making it uninhabitable to be here. Her whole family. So gigantic. <laughs> Watch the shadows. These beautiful wooden desks. Gloves of Battle Mage's power. When a weapon attack roll inflicts a condition, the wielder gains arcane acuity. Maybe that'd be good for Shadowheart currently? Shadowheart are my main character. Oh yeah, she gets the Radiant Orb. Which I- yeah. Yeah, which would only be useful for her. So... I'll send that to my character. Is that blood? Oh? No, never mind. I like how they look with the rest of the armor, too. They look a lot better than, uh, the other ones. <laughs> What's next? What to do? Bet that will fit in my pack. <laughs> I'd hope so, it's one gold coin. With haste. What do you mean you can't reach? Just walk around. What? What is happening? Can you reach Attention. it, Kylock? Can't cast spells. What are we being silenced by? What is wait. happening? Something weird is walking death. I'm so worried by the noises the wood is making. <clears throat> find the safe I'm inside. I had to shut myself in to avoid the shadows. There's no gold. If you're thinking of killing me for it, Garen Goth moved it all to her personal coffers, and I'm unarmed anyway. Just let me out when the shadows are gone, and I'll find a way to repay you. I've only got three candles with me, so hurry. The heavy door grinds open. The combination works. Why would you think 
that that would be a good idea. I think you're just a dummy, unfortunately. Tread carefully. And that one's like completely broken. I'm looking ahead. Why would you let? And you should never. You should never lock yourself in a safe. I don't know why you would think that that's a good idea. <laughs> I don't know why anyone would think that that's a good idea, but you should never lock yourself inside Something of here, an hope. enclosed space as a living being. <laughs> you cannot breathe in there, um, especially if you have a candle with you. Um, you're not going to breathe. You're just going to inhale smoke, and you're going to choke on it, and you're going to fucking die. And that's... Really sad that you're that dumb. Or desperate. I, I'm not really sure which is really more of the case, but you know. Sad. I don't know if we already opened the clerk's office. I feel like we did. Hmm. What's that? Seized inventory. <sighs> Gotta be another way in. What do you mean? I just gotta burn this. <clears throat> distance, darling. Ignis! Medium toughness. Okay. Um. All right, everyone. Stand back. Come here, all of you. Hmm. Okay. I really thought that would do something. <clears throat> well, then I guess we gotta go up, I would imagine. Um, A 30! Um, I don't know. We'll just take that one. <laughs> I'm not sure that that's useful for anyone in particular. And we can't check the chests that are covered, I guess? Threads of silver, dear Selune, our fair maiden, weave our hearts with threads of silver, guide us with light of the moon, and quench us with the purest of tears. Shadows taunt us, hear our prayers. Shadows stalk us, hear our prayer. Shadows wound us, hear our prayer. Selune, thou with radiant loom, mend our hearts with threads of silver, heal us with drops of morning dew, and soothe our souls with softest star glow. I didn't realize we had time to read children's stories. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> the things are just falling apart. Um. A brief respite. Ah! What 
is happening. Can't afford to stay idle. Come on, girly, you gotta jump. I have such a headache. I don't think there's anything else in here for us. At least it doesn't seem like it. Still alive, so yeah. that's progress. I'll take that. Oh, sand shipment box. What's hiding here? Not much. All away from Thay. Jewels and gems, probably. Cheese from the Downlands. Oh, Silks from Cormier, it says. Empty, though. B. Furzu's up to his old tricks, the damn rat. Tried to sail right past without paying toll. A half a dozen crates this time, as if we'd miss a large a shipment that large. Transferred them to impound, and no funny business. We seized two chalices just days ago. One silver, one gold. And they see... And it seems like they grew legs and walked off. Odd, isn't it? I'm not pointing fingers, mind you. But if those chalices don't walk right on back, Garen Goth will want answers. And she'll be asking you first, Jay. Have to keep going. Alright. Is it time to... Go to Moonrise? I think it just might be. <laughs> so I'm gonna stop here because uh, I think this will be a good place to start back up. <laughs>